It's now time to answer some of your business questions. We have Alicia and Carol back with us here. The first one is about making a name for yourself. What are the top three uh, tips on building a brand and making people really remember your name and your brand's ethos? Start with you, Carol. So I think a lot of people confuse a brand with a name. When I think about a brand, I think about your customer promise. So are you delivering an exceptional product and service, a great customer service experience? Are you having them buy into something bigger? Maybe it's a mission or an affinity group, making them feel cared for. And I think if you deliver on those fronts, people will remember your name, they'll remember your brand, they'll talk about you, they'll get their friends to buy from you. And to me, that's sort of the essence of what, the, of what a brand's all about. What do you think, Alicia? So first of all, I love this question, mm -hmm. and I love that it comes from a consumer company, because as you know, they don't have the ability to have some kind of te technological proprietary barrier, and brand is everything for them. So I think that there are probably a few different things they can do. One is to be a thought leader as the head of the business. Getting out there and speaking and writing about your ethos really makes that personal connection and shows people how much it matters to you. The second thing I would say is really make an effort to connect directly with your customers. You know, if you're a food company, maybe that's a demo program at local stores, maybe every once in a while you're, you know, dealing with customers directly in the, in the service department, but really figure out how you can connect with them, um, because then they'll, they'll feel that connection too. And then finally, think about ways that you can partner with other companies, organizations, or people that also reflect your brand, because their brand reflects on you and vice versa, and it helps you expand the distribution. So that could be a nonprofit you partner with for an event or a blogger. You know, I also have to say, I, this, I've never met that business owner before, but I've tried his product. Mm -hmm. I, I heart Quinoan. I think he's doing a pretty good job, even by just the name, mm -hmm. right? I exactly. live in Brooklyn, so it's, it's, I'm surrounded by people who eat Quinoa. I, I will say one yeah. thing, though. from a bra If you're going to talk about the name, mm -hmm. give yourself an opportunity to evolve. And I always go back to Amazon. They started as a bookseller. They could right. have been book books.com but they wanted to sell everything a to z as their brand logo shows if you have a brand that says i do this one specific thing right, you are locked, at, into, you're doing locked that. into doing that thing and so it makes it very difficult you look at something like kentucky fried chicken which had to become kfc mm -hmm. to get away from fried chicken so just think about your ability to evolve if you are focusing on the name yeah it's a very good point i actually dealt with that with my own company right we had to we changed the name of my company because we were too narrow in the beginning as well all right Let's move on to the next one. This is an email from Marshall who writes, what is the long-term impact of testing new products on your website? Is it an issue for customers seeing products come off, and come on and then off? I love this question. I want to see if you guys feel the same way as I do. Okay, let's start with you. I love it too because I love the focus on innovation in the business. And I think that from a long-term perspective, it's great because you're including uh, customers' feedback and then using that to dictate which products uh, should be part of your, your repertoire. But from a short-term perspective, you, there are risks because if you put Put a, a potential product out there and people some people love it but it's not worthy for mass production they could be a little bit frustrated so i think the key is to really focus on communicating this program with your customers and being transparent about it because if you tell them up front you know we're testing this out we value your feedback not all of these might make it then i think that they expect that and also if someone is particularly frustrated maybe you throw some freebies their way yep <laughs> but, but but i think the key is transparency and communication like many things in life yeah i mean testing is really important but at the same time you don't want to be that guy who shows up with flowers for the first three dates and then fourth date it's like sorry i'm not bringing flowers anymore you've set that expectation expectation I expect you to bring flowers when you show up for the date with me and I think it's the same thing with testing products the way that I would approach the transparency is I would do a limited edition or a mm -hmm. seasonal product right. so that it shows that we're only intending to have this for a short period of time now of yep. course you have to balance then that you may get a little bit more extra feedback because people want something limited but I think it helps you to set up that expectation that this product may not be here the next time and then you don't have the disappointed customers when you don't show up with the flowers yep. <laughs> I think great advice from both of you and and I think the premise you guys are telling how to do it right mm -hmm. but I think we all agree that the premise of testing something on your site is great yes. because you will get much better feedback when someone actually has to put down their credit card mm -hmm. than when you're sitting in a focus group yes right? you get right. real-world people, real people feedback. don't know 
what it is that they want. They can't articulate it, but their buying patterns will tell you. Yes. The market will tell you what it wants by the dollars that they spend. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to the last question about work-life balance. It's me and my husband who run the business with one full-time employee and three uh, part-time employees. And my, biz uh, my question is, um, what do you recommend to do to, ba to keep balance between business um, and our personal life? So I worked with my husband for 10 years and then I had to professionally spin him off. Personally, I kept him, <laughs> but I really am one of those people that feels like absence makes the heart grow fonder. This is really difficult and it's really difficult in a small business because it's not like you can divide and conquer and say, oh, well, you go work in this department and I'll work in this department. So I think you really need to set ground rules. You need to set ground rules at work that you have some independent time. Maybe you go to the gym, maybe you take breaks and lunch by yourself. So it's not 24 hours, <laughs> excuse me, of the business. And the same thing at home. After a certain period of time in certain locations, like the bedroom perhaps, you are not allowed to talk about work because otherwise it ends up blending together. And the other thing I would say is make sure that you don't come across too much as a unit. In fact, if you cannot tell people you're married, mm -hmm. sometimes that's better because people started referring to us as the Roths. So instead of being two separate smart individuals, we were like one and a half people. Mm -hmm. And that's just bad math. You want the one plus one to equal three, not one and a half. Right, right. Interesting. What do you think? So I think that this is a very tough issue and so many small businesses face it. And in this example, you have the husband and wife team and also a few employees where I'm sure at business, it feels like a family in some ways. And then at home, business probably creeps in. And my guess is, is that the bigger issue is having the business creep in at home. And I have to wholeheartedly agree with Carol in that you've really got to be disciplined about setting out time for things that are important to you. So that if that means exercise, blocking out you know, an hour three times a week, or maybe making sure that you put Put in that date night every two weeks, block out that time and have it be sacrosanct. Communicate to your employees that that is so important to you and without that balance, the business doesn't thrive. And to do it by yourself, like if you're going to exercise, instead of going to the gym then with your significant other, mm -hmm. go by yourself so that you have that independent spirit and that thing that belongs only to you because you just can't spend that much time. You can't spend 24 hours a day with someone no matter how much you love them and not have it wear on your relationship. Mm -hmm. Also, it's a conversation you need to have with your partner, yes. your spouse in this particular case, right? For me, I work with my brother on when we grew our business, and it is blended, right? Yeah. We could be talking about personal stuff at work and work stuff. That doesn't work for everyone, mm -hmm. right? For us, it works because we have the kind of relationship where we can just say stop, and yeah. I know that we care about each other personally as much as we do as partners, and so we're able to kind of go back and forth. But it's yeah. different with a family Absolutely, member. Absolutely, sure, because we don't live in the same yes. house. <laughs> yeah, 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 we are not, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely, it's, it's different, but I think different people need different things, yes, right? right? And some people need that structure, and it sounds like they may mm -hmm. need the structure of, hey, you know, after seven o'clock, we're not talking about That's work, right. or Tuesdays, we're not talking about work. Because it's not sexy after seven o'clock. It's sexy to talk about work <laughs> up until seven, and after seven, <laughs> other things are sexy, not talking about work. <laughs> all right, we will leave it on that. Both of you, thank you so thank much. You. Really appreciate all of your advice.